Netflix recently released its trailer for the highly anticipated The Umbrella Academy, a live action adaptation of the Dark Horse comic series of the same name, created by Gerard Way and Gabriel Ba. And the trailer packed quite the punch, plus a healthy dose of mystery. So today we're taking a closer look at the source material and its history, with our list of the top 10 Umbrella Academy's shocking facts. Also note, this list does contain some minor spoilers for the comic, which might end up being minor spoilers for the show as a whole. So proceed with caution, friends. And at number 10, Alternate History. The Umbrella Academy takes place in an alternate timeline of sorts, one in which John F. Kennedy was never assassinated. Kennedy is actually a character who appears in the comics. We see him in the flashback in the second series of the Umbrella Academy comic, titled Dallas, in which he sends the Academy out on a mission to fight against the animated Lincoln Memorial. Yup. So how do they take it on? Well, they end up defeating it by using a statue of John Wilkes Booth. And at number 9, a new kind of superhero family. The members of the Umbrella Academy are described as a dysfunctional family family of superheroes. They're all children who were adopted. And their leader? Sir Reginald Hargreaves, who is actually an alien disguised as a famous entrepreneur. Reginald proves to be a bit of a shit father though, considering he doesn't even give the kids names, only calls them by numbers, and refuses to have them call him dad. Because of the themes of family, the series has often been compared to both the Fantastic Four and the X-Men, makeshift families that can often be deemed as rather dysfunctional, depending on the story arc of course. And at number 8, The 43 Children. The comic begins with an absurd event. The incident in which a finishing blow called an atomic flying elbow in a cosmic wrestling match occurs. At the same moment, 43 superpowered infants are born to women who were not pregnant in a seemingly random and unconnected event. Sir Reginald Hargreaves goes out and adopts seven of those children, building them into a team of superpowered individuals in order to save the world from an unspecified threat. The seventh child, though, Vanya, proves to have no abilities. In addition to that, we never do find out what happened to the other 36 children that Reginald didn't scoop up. In at number seven, the seventh child. Now, based off the trailer, it may seem that the seventh child has been left out. Or rather, child who is called number six. But that is not quite the case. Now, according to the official news that has been revealed about the Netflix show, number six will be quite present, played by Ethan Huang. In the lore of the show, similar to the comics, he's Ben Hargreaves, known as number six, or the horror, who was a gullible child with the ability to manifest monsters from other dimensions through his body. His death is what caused the team to disband initially. And at number six, Apocalypse Suite. In the trailer for the Netflix show, we learn that the members of the Umbrella Academy have all been reunited years later, brought together again by the death of Sir Reginald Hargreaves, the only parental figure that they ever really had. And now they must face a new threat in which could result in the end of the world. This is plucked straight out of the first volume of the main series in the comics titled Apocalypse Suite, which consisted of six issues. Apocalypse Suite is actually a piece of music. A group of musicians called the Orchestra Verdement claim that they can play that piece of music in order to bring about the destruction of the world. And at number five, The Boy's Age. The boy, also known as number five, is one of the most fascinating members of the team. He looks like as if he's around the age of 10. That's because his physical appearance is locked, and he remains in the same body. Now in reality, he's actually about 60 years old. This is due to his powers. He's able to manipulate time, and during the final battle that the child version of the team fought, he had traveled through time, which took him a whole 50 years to rectify, trying to figure out how to travel backwards to what he considered his present. Now this ability to time travel froze his physical state in its 10 year old form. Moving on to number 4, MySpace. Now in addition to the main series, several Umbrella Academy short stories were released. With one of them initially debuting on what some who recall the earlier days of the internet may see as a really strange distribution plan. Now, all of these short stories were released through Dark Horse Presents, but this one in particular, the last one, titled Anywhere But Here, was released on the Dark Horse Presents MySpace. Yeah. MySpace. Now, for those of you who have absolutely no idea what MySpace is, it was the big social media trend that came before Facebook and allowed you to add pretty much whatever you wanted to your page, from music to images to videos to what have you. It pretty much died out with the popularity of Facebook, but has still managed to tucker on, with it being made use of in instances like this. Anywhere But Here was also included in the Dallas collections of the series that were released in 2009. Up next, number three, the film. Before it became a Netflix television show, The Umbrella Academy was actually in development as a feature film, having been optioned by Universal Studios. The screenwriter who was hired to tackle the project was Mark Bomback, who went on to work on the 2012 remake of Total Recall, the 2014 Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and even helped out on the script of 2017's Logan. Bomback was replaced in 2010 on the project by Ross and Marshall Thunder, and after news of that broke, there was pretty much radio silence as far as the film was concerned, aside from a comment from creator Gerard Way that the film had been in good talks and had a really good script, but ultimately the project was kind of up to the universe. 
Then in 2005, it was announced that the Umbrella Academy would be developed into a television series instead of a film, produced by Universal Cable Productions with Netflix on board. And in number two, influences. Creators Gerard Way and Gabriel Buss spoke to Nerdist about some of the influences that inspired their work on the Umbrella Academy. Both of them cited the X-Men as a major inspiration, with Way noting that he grew up reading Chris Claremont's run on the X-Men, which he notes is really apparent in the second collection of the series, Dallas. Grant Morrison's Doom Patrol had also a huge influence on Way, with him having told the online news site that Morrison's run helped reinvigorate him and pushed him back into doing comics again. Both creators also noted that the 60s TV show The Prisoner was also a big influence when it came to creating a sense of paranoia in the world. And last but not least in at number one, the creator. If the name of Umbrella Academy's co-creator Gerard Way seems familiar to you, it's because he's not only famous for writing comic books. Gerard Way is also the lead singer of the band My Chemical Romance, the rock band that was quite popular back in the early 2000s, which split in March of 2013. He had released a solo album called Hesitant Alien a year later, but ended up becoming more involved in the comic scene, even becoming the co-founder of the DC imprint Young Animal. The Umbrella Academy is by far his greatest success in the comics industry though, having won an Eisner, which is pretty darn special. Way had originally graduated from New York School of Visual Arts and even interned at DC Comics. He pitched the Umbrella Academy after the release of My Chemical Romance's 2007 album The Black Parade, with Dark Horse publishing the first two series in 2007 and 2008. And fun fact, in the beginning events of the comics, in which the Umbrella Academy are initially active as children, it takes place in the year 1977, which is actually the year that Way was born. Alright, there we have it friends, the Umbrella Academy premieres on Netflix this February 15th. Are you excited? Give us a shout in those comments below and let us know your thoughts. If you dug this video, spread the love, hit that like button, and be sure to subscribe to Top 10 Nerd for more lists just like this one. In the meantime though, thanks for watching friends, I'll catch you all in the next video.